Good morning and a very warm welcome once again from Musselburgh Congregational Church and a very happy and joyful Easter to you all. It was lovely on Sunday for many of us to be able to gather and celebrate our risen Lord together. And on Sunday afternoon, uh, I was chatting to some friends and not all of them um, attend church or know much about church. And one particularly was very interested in our Easter service and was asking me all about it. And he asked, so is this the day that Jesus died then? Did he die on the Sunday? And I said, no, Jesus died on the Friday. Sunday, Easter day, is the day of the resurrection, the day when Jesus rose from the dead. And my friend said, oh well, so Sunday is the end of the story then. And I said, oh no, uh, the resurrection is the beginning of the story. Uh, Jesus Christ is risen today and that is the joy of Easter and the source of our hope in every circumstance, in every day of our lives. Keith will play for us now. Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. <laughs> who was the first to discover the empty tomb. When she sees that the stone has been rolled away, she runs back to the lodging house to tell the others. Peter and John go out to the tomb with her. Peter enters first, but it is John who comes in behind him but instantly grasps what has happened. John sees the strips of linen lying exactly where Jesus' body had been and he believes. The men run back to tell the others, but Mary, she remains at the tomb weeping. And she turns to a man standing nearby, assuming that he must be the gardener. She asks him, do you know where they have taken our Lord? He replies, Mary. And in that instant, she knows it is Jesus. Mary longs to embrace him, to hold on to him. But Jesus says, do not hold on to me, Mary. I have not yet returned to my father. Instead, go and tell the others and tell them, I am returning to my father and your father, my God and your God. So Mary runs to the others, declaring with great joy, I have seen the Lord. Keith will now play a lovely celebratory hymn for us uh, called Jubilati. Thank you, Keith. <laughs>
afternoon. Jesus also appears to two men. They have been in Jerusalem for the Passover. They are followers of Jesus. They're now walking in the direction of Emmaus, seven miles away. They are downcast and they are deep in conversation. They don't even notice when Jesus starts to walk along beside them. And he asks them, what is it that you're talking about so intently? And they say to him, you've been in Jerusalem this weekend and you don't know the things that have happened. What things? asked Jesus. About Jesus of Nazareth, they reply. He was a prophet, powerful in word and in deed. And we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. Instead, he was arrested. He was handed over to the authorities and he was crucified. And what more? All this happened three days ago. And now we are amazed to hear that some of our women report that the tomb is empty and they are saying that he is alive and some of our men they went out to the tomb and found it just exactly as the women had said and there is no sign of Jesus well Jesus begins speaking to them about Moses and all the prophets explaining to them everything that is written about the Messiah surely they must know that the Messiah was prophesied to suffer many things <clears throat> before he entered his glory. The men are intently listening and they arrive in Emmaus and ask Jesus, why does he not just stay overnight? Evening is now upon them. So as they all sit down to share a meal together, Jesus gives thanks and he breaks bread. And when he does this, suddenly their eyes are open and they recognise him. And in that moment, he disappears. The men immediately make their way back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples what has happened. And all the time they're discussing the things that Jesus told them and how their hearts were burning as he was explaining to them about the great prophecies. On reaching Jerusalem, they're in the middle of sharing this remarkable story with the disciples when suddenly Jesus is in the room with them. He shows them his hands and his feet, saying, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything from Moses, the prophets and the Psalms that has been written about me must be fulfilled. The Messiah will suffer but he will rise from the dead on the third day. Repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them, saying, Receive the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> It is a new beginning. These were the men who would take the gospel of the risen Christ out into the world. It would begin like a spark, like a small flame, but in time it would become a fire that no one or nothing would be able to contain. The disciples are fearless, strong and resolute. They had seen the Lord. And this changed everything. In the past, they hadn't always understood Jesus' teaching. But in the light of the resurrection, they had a fresh understanding of everything he had ever taught them or that they had seen him do. They feared no man. Death was defeated. Christ is their conquering king. They found solace and joy in knowing that they would share in his victory. All who love the Lord are heirs to his kingdom. On the first night when Jesus appeared to them, Thomas wasn't there. And when the others told him about the resurrection, he refused to believe it. Surely he could trust their words, but no, nope, he was adamant he would not believe unless he saw the risen Christ for himself. Jesus later appeared to Thomas, who at once declared, My Lord 
and my God. Thomas believed because he had seen the evidence. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet who believe. The church today is a body of people who have not seen the Lord and yet we believe for we have experienced him and we know him. He makes himself known to us through his living word, through his omnipresence, through the comfort of his love and the indwelling of his peace which he so graciously gives to us. Today is a new beginning and Jesus is calling us now to go out in his name and share the good news of the gospel, not in our own strength, for when he calls us to a task, he equips us for that task. He calls us to go out that others may hear and believe and know the comfort of his love. We proclaim the truth of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, who lived, who died, who rose again, and who reigns forevermore. Amen. Alison will bring our worship to a close with a lovely hymn for Easter called Risen. Thank you, Alison.
the great hope of Easter is not contained to Easter morning. It is the great hope that we have every day in life. Until we meet or speak again, may God keep you in the cup of his hand and may you know the comfort of his abiding presence. Amen.